G'day everyone and welcome to Supernova 2012 for the first time happening on the Gold Coast. We're here at the Gold Coast Convention and Exhibition Centre. Will Wheaton, Summer Glau, the Weasley Twins and plenty more. Hopefully we'll grab them soon. You've got to stick around. It all starts in 12 seconds. on the Gold Coast, you never know what you're going to find, like a stormtrooper that likes Doctor Who, I believe. Yes, indeed. Well, that's pretty ex... What? What? Wrong franchise. Ah. Oh. Oh. Well, apparently there's... The sonic screwdriver... It's not working. You, you take both of these. I'm going. What? Cliff, thanks for joining me on uh, on the sci-fi sector. Oh, now, you played Lord System Bale mm -hmm. on Stargate SG-1. What was that like and how great was it? Oh, it was great. I mean, it was like, such a great show to work on. And uh, like I was saying earlier on, I never knew from episode to episode whether I was staying. You know, I didn't have any big 10 episode deals with them. Um, but just thanks to all the fans, you know, they liked the character and that's what kept him in the show. And then it just developed, you know, from there. Uh, the writers kind of saw how I wanted to play him and um, yeah, they were great. Fun show. I was always made very welcome every time going back up to Vancouver. Conventions like Supernova. Have you have you been to many? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of them. You know, over the past ten years. Um, I think two years ago was the most. I did eleven conventions in a, in one year, which was crazy. Uh, last year I kind of took a little time off from doing them. I did a couple of them, um, and actually next weekend I'm in France straight away. So it's been. This is a busy month for me as well. But yeah, they're fantastic. You know, we get to travel all over the world. It's, it's amazing. It's a gift. And the fans, they're pretty fanatical, aren't they? Oh, how they're you, intense. Yep. How do you, how do you, how do you, have you had any crazy stories, crazy experiences? No, not really, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, we have problems, you know, every now and then. But no, I've never had real issues with fans. Everyone's really been nice and respectful. I don't know. I, I think it's because they're scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> they're scared of Bob. <laughs> now, you don't have a go all in, in, inside you now. Uh, maybe you? I do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what was it like to work with work with the cast, the three greatest names in television, Richard Dean Anderson, of course. Yeah. What was he like? Well, it was great. I mean, when I first got on the show, obviously I was excited. I was going to work with MacGyver, you know, and, and of course I grew up watching him. Uh, Richard's a great guy. He's very quiet. He keeps himself, you know, he's very professional, which I like. I'm, I'm kind of that way myself. Um, but all of the cast, I mean, between Michael and Chris and all of them and Amanda, of course, uh, they really made me feel welcome every time I went back there. From Martin Wood, the directors, Peter DeLuise, all really nice to work with, and all the producers, great. I have a slight man crush on Peter DeLuise, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Peter's great. Peter's a funny guy. Cool. Thank you very much for joining me on the Sci-Fi Center. Oh, you're welcome, man. Thank you very much. Have fun. The 501st is a Star Wars fan club. Now, I'm here with Stormtrooper AR55728572512. Tell us a little bit about the uh, 501st. Uh, the 501st is a costume group. Uh, we have uh, just over 8,000 members in 42 countries. Here in Queensland, we're the Red Bank Garrison with just over 100 members. 100 members? Correct, that's right, sir. For six movies? Oh, come on now. And a Clone Wars uh, cartoon show as well. well. You know, I've just started watching the Clone Wars. What, what, do, you, what do you love about Star Wars? Uh, being the bad guy to really the good guy, simple as that. Who do you prefer, Rebel Scum or Imperial uh, Awesomeness? Do you need to ask that? Well, probably not, but no. you know, you, you could secretly be a rebel uh, spy. Sir, please. Well, I've got to ask. I know, but uh, no, sir. Imperial scam all the way. Very good. Now, you, have you seen the Robot Chicken franchise? Yes, I have. What do you think? Superb. You love a bit of a joke? I do indeed. Darth Vader, 
and an Imperial officer. I feel a little bit uh, underdressed. Uh, I am rebel, but I won't tell them that. Um, probably shouldn't have told you that either. But uh, yeah, so six movies, as I said, that's all you've got. Bring it back in. No, it's uh, six movies. Don't forget the cartoon series, the new live action series. Plenty more things to come yet. Yeah, but still, 726 episodes in the in the Star Trek franchise and 11 movies with with a 12th on the way. Thanks for joining me on the Sci-Fi Sector. How are you today? Uh, I'm hungover. <laughs> but I'm good. I'm good. You getting there? You getting through? Yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, I'm doing all right. I feel like. Um, Canada and Australia really get along as far as drinking goes, so <laughs> so I've had a good time later. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What do you think of conventions and all these fans that just come out of the woodwork? And what do I think of conventions? I absolutely love conventions. You know, I spend a lot of time. Well, first of all, I'm a sci-fi fan myself, so for me, I get to go walk around and look at cool stuff and buy way too much stuff. I end up spending way too much money, but. Um, it's great, and then the other side of it is when I'm a guest and, and uh, I get to meet so many of my fans. And this trip especially, um, I don't do a lot of conventions, I'm trying to do more, but I, I haven't had the time to do uh, a lot lately. And years ago there wasn't Twitter, and when I first started doing them there wasn't Twitter or any of that stuff, and now with Twitter, when people come up to me, they're like, I'm Sharkface427, and I'm like, cool! Like, I've been speaking with you for a year, you know, we've been having this conversation and now I get to meet them in person. So conventions are unbelievable and the fans that come out of the woodwork are, are lovely. And uh, I, I really do appreciate them and I'm grateful that they want to share their time with me. Now obviously you, were, uh, you appeared on Stargate Atlantis for the first few seasons. First, yeah, first couple well, seasons. First couple first seasons before they turned you in. I like jumped you off and, and my yeah. splashed you in the water and did all those kind of and crazy And it's only two hours from the career. Um, what's it like working with the cast and Joe and, right, and taking on, Bye. you know, that this massive franchise that is Stargate? Oh, wow. What's it like working with those guys? It was a lot of fun. Everyone was super nice. We um, we quickly bonded and, and became close. You know, the, the fun thing about joining a franchise as big as uh, Stargate was was that it was like a turnkey operation starting Atlantis because you came in and you had guys that had been working together for eight years and you sort of walk in. They know exactly what they're doing. The crew knows exactly what they're doing. So even though it was a new show, it was already a well-oiled machine. You know, they, it was very efficient. And um, we just got along really quickly and really well. And I, I think that, I think it was a really special time. And I think uh, it's evident when you watch the show, especially the first, you know, three seasons. Um, it's a really special show. And plus, I mean, we were in Atlantis. We are literally in the lost city of Atlantis. Like, I don't see many things that are cooler than that. So, so what you're saying is it was real? Yes. The Stargate program is Yeah, real. we were actually there. And you actually went, so it was a documentary. It was a, it was a docudrama. Docudrama. Yeah. Right. So my question is... It was more of a mockumentary mock than anything else, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, because I was going to say, you know, like... If yeah, you, we were the spinal tap of sci-fi. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, and everything was set to 11. <laughs> that's fantastic. Rainbow, yeah. I've asked all my questions. Oh, that's it? Thank you very much. I got a question for you. Yes. No, I don't. No, you don't? No, no I okay. don't. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alrighty, guys. Now, thanks for joining us on the Sci-Fi Sector. Thanks for having us. Now, I believe that uh, your claim to fame is that you created a web series. Yes. Called Red vs. Blue. Yes. Which is a mesh and mask series. Yes. Similar to, there was a, a guy that created one called Star Trek Borg, and he ah. used it out of a, um, was out of a Star Trek game. But oh, it's very cool. similar, isn't it? So you use cool, the, cool. you use the game and use everything in in universe and yep. to create the series. Yeah. And then you just add your crazy voices on top. Yeah, it started uh, as a machinima series, which was basically using you know 3D game engines in real time to create goofy narratives. And it sort of started like that. And now we're incorporating some uh, animation into our series as well. And cool. so that's like a lot of fun for us. So yeah. yeah. Cool. And Joel, I believe you've, you've starred in, uh, a, well, you've had a couple of voice roles in Halo 3, is that right? Yeah, we had a thing, uh, we had a small bit in Halo 3 that if you uh, go through, uh, I can't remember the name of the map, but I think the people do, but you get played on Legendary. But based on what level you play, you get a different set of guys from RVB. 
Right, so okay. yeah. Okay. And I believe you've also you've also been an actor as well in, in Alias and Criminal Minds. And yeah, just different pieces here and there. I was uh, on a soap opera called Passions for a little while. I had to wear a neckerchief. Yeah, a nice little it was, neckerchief. Yeah, it was like a pirate. It was really embarrassing. It was good. Um, yeah, and a couple different things here and there. Played some monsters. I had to play a monster once where I had to wear like two pairs of contact lenses. I'd one wear one over the other. <laughs> That's terrible. Never, never do that. That's not a good idea. Don't ever do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's just so, a little advice. Now, That's how. Come back to your neckerchief. Uh huh. Which Let's one's not, better? Which one's better? Neckerchief. Uh huh. Or bow tie. Tying in with Doctor Who, of well, course. Pretty much anything is better than a neckerchief. Have you seen one? They're I not. Have, I have. Well, unless yeah. you're like Fred from Scooby Doo, you're not gonna pull it off. Well, there's also uh, Matt. I think it's Matt Preston from uh, MasterChef Australia, which oh, is a cooking reality show. He wears a neckerchief. No, he can pull it off. Oh, yeah. He can pull it off. This not not me. A neckerchief is not an easy thing to pull off. <laughs> I mean, no. It's got uh, Physically, too. Yeah. It's, it's difficult it, it's to a, It's like, yeah, a, yeah you got to do like a sailor's backwards. Yeah. <laughs> not, you know, it's like, and if you do it wrong, you cut off only, the oxygen. Only Boy yeah. Scouts know how to do Yeah, it's them. not, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do it at home. Yeah. Beautiful. Guys, thank you very much for joining us on the Sci-Fi Sector. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Edward, thanks for joining me on the Sci-Fi Sector. Um, now, I'm just doing a quick bit of research earlier, and I believe that you were a baseball player in, in your youth. Yes, I was. I played a lot of ball when I was uh, starting off my life. At the age of six, I started to play, and I played it until the age of 14, almost every Well, I played it every day. Wow. And then by 13, you jumped into music? At 14, I got into music, and then that was it. I, I never put on a set of cleats again. <laughs> and then uh, and then you fell into acting. And yeah, from there, we went into uh, dancing and theater, and then uh, into uh, motion pictures and television. Cool. And then you, of course, was Captain Adama on uh, Battlestar, the, re the revised Battlestar. Did you feel any, any pressure from fans and, and stuff like that recreating the Battlestar universe? I never felt any pressure at all from any of the fan base. Um, I made it very clear from the very beginning, if people really, really loved the original Battlestar, that they should not under any circumstances watch the reimagining because it would have been detrimental to their mental health. Uh, as soon as we made Starbuck a girl, it kind of like threw the whole thing into another sphere. So I made it very clear. I said, please don't do this to yourself. When we're on the air, just get the old Battlestar Galacticas and put those in instead of watching our program, watch that one. And uh, don't do yourself any harm because it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to rock your world. And now, jumping straight into conventions, obviously Battlestar's off the air now. Um, now you're doing conventions. How do you feel about all the fans that come out of the woodwork and they all, are there any crazy stories that, you, that you've encountered? There's no crazy stories. All there is is a great admiration and I'm doing this for uh, a great sense of understanding of what the fan base has given not only Battlestar Galactica, not only Blade Runner, but, and not only recently Dexter, but for the other works that I've been available, you know, been doing all my life, so Miami Vice and, you know, Selena and American Me, you know, Ballad of Gregory Cortez, all the films that I've been able to, to make that have gone around the world. So um, it's a real love affair that you have here. This, if you've never been to a convention, then you would never have any idea as to what goes on here. But this is a lot different than anybody anticipates. And it's a wonderful time and people just get lost in here and it's just fantastic. They create their own sense of understanding of who and what we do here. Thank you very much for joining me on the sci-fi sector. Mm -hmm. Now you penned the original Star Trek movie. The story for the first movie, yes. Fantastic. And came back 30 years later to write the 2009, the novelization of the 2009 movie. Yeah, there weren't a lot of people connected with the first film still around, and I'm probably <laughs> the only writer who was. But it was fun to do. It was fun to do. Cool. And you also did uh, 10 uh, novels uh, based on the animated series as well. Yeah, I novelized the whole animated series in, uh, as you say, a series of ten books. That was also a lot of fun. Fantastic. And uh, Star Wars as well. I did a quick did a quick research on you this morning and, and discovered that uh, you actually wrote Star Wars. The first book. The first the book. First and book. the first sequel book. A book called Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Yeah, yeah. Also a long time ago. <laughs> so, have you been keeping busy? Yes, uh, I'm a storyteller. 
And even if nobody paid me, I'd probably still write stories. That's what I like to do, and people seem to enjoy what I do, so I keep doing it. Fantastic. And um, conventions, Headicon conventions, were they a bit overwhelming sometimes? They were originally. I mean, the first time I went to a convention, I got on a shuttle bus to go from where I was staying to the main convention center, and I sat down next to a man who was about six foot two, with long wavy white hair and wearing a right a white shirt. He looked like the doctor from uh, Back to the Future, <laughs> and it was Fritz Leiber, who was one of the most respected writers in the field. Oh, wow. And I was this you know young nerd kid, and we just had this lovely chat going over to the main hotel. And ever since then, I've never been intimidated by anything at a convention. Fantastic, Alan. Thank you very much for your Pleasure. time. Supernova 2012 done here on the Gold Coast Exhibition Centre. Thank you very much for your company in the return to the sci-fi sector. Supernova heads around the country now. We'll catch up with it in Perth. Christopher Lloyd and a couple of other special guests to be announced later on apparently. Trekzone.org for all the details and we'll see you for the lost tapes in the next couple of weeks.